on Ayurvedic approach in terminal illnesses. I invite Dr. C. D. C. B. from Malaysia. He was born in Kerala and again studied in Gurukula system for seven and a half years. Although he has sound knowledge and understanding modern medical and paramedical sciences and also of yoga, he has chosen to practice Ayurveda and today is the chief Ayurvedic physician at Ayu Center in Kuala Lumpur. For many years now, Dr. CB has been associated with conducting medical camps in rural areas of Tamil Nadu and Kerala. In addition, under the guidance of Dr. K. Rajagopal and Ayur Director Amala Cancer Institute, Trichur, he has gained valuable experience and insight into treating cancer, kidney failures, and connective tissue diseases. All these experiences have led Dr. CB and his work being published in several newspapers and health journals. Recently this year, he has authored a book, Knowledge of Life, Anybody interested can see at the Ayush stall outside after the class is over. Dr. C.B. Respected guests, dear friends, thank you for the kind introduction, Varsha. All the people who have given the talk so far has taken all the topics from me. I have, pre I have prepared some slides, but I don't know what to speak now. Anyway, the topic is management of terminal illness through Ayurveda. The topic, it says that it is terminal. Can anything be done? Can it be treated? That's not the expectation. Can the disease be improved? That's not the expectation. They're asking whether we can improve the quality of the life. Can we extend from three months to one year, or maybe six months to two years? So they are looking for the quality of life. Is it possible? So they are not asking us to prevent, to cure. The question is, can you give a quality? According to Ayurveda, terminal illness is coming under asadhya, where it is incurable. Any disease, when it has crossed the fourth stage, especially you take any disease, even cancer, or AIDS, or tuberculosis, or any chronic infections, where there is no cure they are expecting. The doctors are saying, this is it, you may take him back home, or you may take him back to a home, or you can take him to any place where you can just give him some quality. Recently, there was this patient who came to me, maybe about six months back, I think. He was diagnosed with a brain tumor, and he was operated once, and within three months, the tumor grew back within the brain. And the doctor suggested, you need to go through another surgery, but we are not sure about the end results. So he came to us, he was admitted, he was given the normal proper treatment for a tumour, it was not cancerous, a tumour within the brain. And he went through the, all the treatment for a period of three, six months. And after six months, he was actually in Kuala Lumpur, he was transferred to Penang, which is about three hours drive from Kuala Lumpur. And he continued the medications and he followed the diet and everything. After one year, he had slight headache. So he had a fear whether I got the tumor back, what's happening. So he went back to the physician and the physician said, we have to take an MRI. Then only we can tell you, they took the MRI, they said a tumor is back. We can still see the lining. You may have to go for the surgery. So I, he called me and said, doctor, it's not a good news. The tumor is growing back. Um, what should I do? I said, you take a, another opinion, maybe a second opinion. He went to another hospital, he had another second opinion, and the doctor said, yes, tumor is back. We had to prepare you for a surgery. And his, he has a brother and a sister who are all modern physicians, so they basically was indirectly criticizing. We told you already that you should do that, you should do this, you know, he had this fear. At the same time, he said, okay, I'll go for the surgery. Everything was prepared, the, the, the surgeon operated the head and he said, oh, there's no tumor, there's only a line. It's an outer lining of the tumor, 
actually you don't have a tumor you can go back so there he was the tumor is actually even though you can see the lining there's no tumor but the the, the MRI shows the lining but within the brain tumor the tissue has changed to a normal so what he went through the whole program is medications diet breathing techniques and all those things so he was treated and he was cured there now I have another case history which is about 10 years back Miss Anne came to me and Anne said came to me with the breast cancer which is almost like tumor and she said she came to me this is almost 10 years back and she said doctor this is the diagnosis my doctor said I had to go through the chemotherapy surgery and radiation I'm not interested to do that do that can you do it 10 years back I said and better go back to the doctor I don't think I can do anything you better do the surgery maybe after surgery come back to me she was not happy with my answer she said okay I'll go back and after one year she came back to me and it was in the beginning when she came to me the tumor was strictly there it was more than quite huge actually second time when she came to me there was already open wound like a red imagine like a red cauliflower bleeding it was really very bad fourth stage maybe there's a fifth stage that was the stage and she went back to the doctor and the doctor said uh, your, your survival is only maximum three months and you have to go back so that's the time she's coming to me so Anne came to me and, and said Doc, uh, can you do anything I said why what you did for this one year oh I did detox I did fruit diet I did fasting I did that I did this so many things I did but nothing worked so I said do you think I can do something yeah maybe you should try but and I'm not so confident what you're expecting then she asked me are you the healer you're not the healer he will heal why can't you just do what you can I said okay I'll give it a try I admitted her before admission she told me by the way I don't have any money okay I said that means I have to treat you I said do you have any any family members do you have anybody I can refer if anything happens to you oh no I don't want you to inform anybody I don't have any friends that means if she die we have to take care of everything I said okay no problem she stayed there went through the treatment program treatment program includes so terminal I'll tell you what we do in Ayurveda the first step which we do is that we try to create an appetite for the person we believe improve the digestive fire because she says I don't feel hungry so the first and the foremost approach in Ayurveda for a terminal ill case is introduce herbal combination to make sure that she have some hunger some digestive fire has to be improved within her system and we believe in Ayurveda that if the person say I'm hungry he won't die or she won't die that means as for us there is hunger there is appetite the person won't die so creating hunger was the first step so we introduced some herbal combination just to create some appetite for her she started saying okay maybe a little appetite where you are introducing this next thing is that introduce a proper diet you are introducing a proper diet means rice porridge which is easily digestible food you don't think about the protein theory you don't think about the carbohydrate theory or anything you are thinking about introducing something which she can digest it which she can eat which she basically can assimilate it which can give some metabolic power within her so we introduced digestive easily digestive uh, rice which is we introduce some nyavara rice basically to give it internally properly uh, cooked well cooked diet, right? because nyavara rice is Dr. Shastika Shali which she was explaining in the morning by Dr. Shanti so that rice was well cooked and given to her little by little introduction introduction of some herbal formulation for her to digest the food so slowly she started feeling okay I'm hungry I can eat little by little so there is no oil treatment introduced because she's not in a condition to introduce any oil treatment there is no panchakarma or detoxification is introduced because she's not in a position to any introduce any medicines any 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 detoxification because you have to make sure that the person have some energy to take even the detox so herbal formulations are not introduced for the cancer there 
Herbal formulations are not introduced for any other diseases there, only to improve her appetite, improve the metabolism, and slowly, slowly build up the hunger, build up some energy in her. There, preservation of the health, preservation of the life was the utmost important thing. Extend the life, extend the quality. And slowly, she said, I, I can eat. Then introduce slowly the rice. Some well-cooked porridge, well-cooked vegetable, and then slowly we started introducing the medication which can rejuvenate her. Not still we haven't started anything for the cancer. Rejuvenate, build up the immunity. So some of the rasayanas, Brahma rasayana, some amount of August rasayana, because the, the tumor has already gone from the breast into the bone and into the lungs also. So there slowly the medication was introduced to improve her lung condition, uh, sorry, improve her general health. Then only slowly we started, so then she started moving, walking, slowly started going into the kitchen, asking me, can you give me a dosa? Maybe one idli, why the doctor is always giving me porridge and porridge and rice and vegetable only can. So she started asking for more food. That is the time we introduced slowly other medicine which is to improve the cancer. Then only we started there, the, even though our expectation is not to cure the cancer, but still to prevent the metastasis from that stage to the next. So slowly her cough was improved, the symptomatically her pains in the shoulder, back was reduced. Then we started introducing some simple oil application for the wound and started dressing slowly. And the dressing was done from the beginning to make sure there's no infection. So prevent infection and slowly introducing the medicine for the cancers to slowly. And she survived almost for two years in the center. After two years, she, that means she started helping in the kitchen, she started helping in the, in the, in the pharmacy, she started doing small, small, small work in the visit because there's no place for her to go. And nobody came in the two years even to visit her. And after that, one of her friends came to visit her from somewhere. And then she came to me, doctor, now I feel a little better. Can I just take a break for two, three months and go with my friend? She's actually staying in Ipoh. And she's telling, actually, I can't stay with her. I don't want to burden you. I said, provided every two weeks you come and see me. Provided you take the medication strictly. Provided you follow the diet properly. Provided you, take the, you follow the breathing techniques properly. Provided you make sure that you rest completely. She went back. Three months back, just three months back, I got a call from the friend that she is admitted in GH. Very chronic, critical condition. So I asked her friend, what happened? Oh, doctor, it's better you come and see the doctor. She's in, uh, uh, in the GH. So I went there. She's with all completely back to the same, maybe much worse than she came to me. So I asked her friend, what happened? Then she said, it's better you talk to her. So, so and what happened? You were so healthy. What happened this three months? Oh, doctor. One of my, I went to see one, uh, one nutritionist and she said, having only vegetarian food is not sufficient. You must start eating some fish, some chicken, some liver soup, something like that. And she died after that. Means she could not survive. What I'm trying to say is, see, you put so much of effort and the patient understand it. She got the relief and she was so happy, but just within three months, just because somebody introduced non-vegetarian food, she could not survive it. So that means proper medications, proper diet, proper care, you can certainly extend. Like the first case where his tumor was not there. In second case, even though she improved, she just decided to go to somebody because the friend recommended and she said, what are you eating only vegetarian? It's better you take something. That means the person could not understand the real picture or the clear picture about it. So what I'm trying to say is that if any condition can be addressed at any stage. But expectation should not be cure for all the conditions. In some cases, it's the quality of life. Sometimes it's quality of uh, 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 the, the maybe prolonging in the life. So by introducing proper diet, proper medications, proper rest, proper pranayama and yoga, and some counseling, where you are actually, sometimes you are preparing the person to leave the world but happily. Sometimes you are preparing him to accept the disease, happily. There is, there is always a fear with the patient. The moment you, they see any disease, there is a fear. If the moment you come to a terminal stage, 
And he said, I, I know I'm going to die. Yeah, everybody have to die, but you don't need to cry from this day onwards for that one day. He just prepares. So it is that counseling is basically to make sure that he have that understanding, okay, this is the sickness which has happened to me. I accept it. I will fight it with like a friendly manner. So there the counseling is important. And sometimes a whole family support people, support group. Everybody plays a role there. It's not just a survival, making a person surviving and living his life is totally different. I hope uh, I have expressed what I'm supposed to express. Thank you for listening.